you guys. So just been sharpening my pencils, making them nice and nice and ready. Um, I've got a really big set of colouring pencils. Um, but what I've done is I've just, from some of the artists that we're looking at today, I've just picked out a few colours that I see in their drawing. So when I show you the artist inspiration for today, that might be a helpful way of you kind of selecting the colours that you're going to use. Um, totally fine if you've got a small set of colours that you can work from. But um, what I'll do is I'll put into the corner one of the artists that we're looking at today. So just while people sign on, if you want to use, um, if you want to use any colours inspired by these artists, you could grab those colours now. So this is one of the artists that we're going to be looking at. So you could get out some yellows, some oranges, some blues. Um, this is another artist that we're going to be looking at today. So that's the artist that I used as the inspiration for my colour palette. So I've kind of got, they're quite muted colours, but that's the selection that I chose inspired by that Sarah Lightman um, image. But don't worry if you don't have a wide variety. Just work with what you've got today and um, yeah, just work with what you've got and see how it develops. So the first thing we're going to do today, before we do any of our warm-up drawings, we're going to do four blocks of colour on your page. So I'm going to divide, I'm not going to draw it into quarters, but I'm going to use four different colours to lightly block out four spaces on here, okay? So that's what we're going to do to begin with today before we do any of our warm-up drawings. We're just going to give ourselves slightly coloured backgrounds. So you don't need to press too hard. If you're using watercolour paints or even watercolour pencils, you could use water to just get that as an even tone. The main idea is we just want to see how colours interact with each other today to begin with. So. That's roughly what I'm doing. I'm just giving a light background in four different colours. I'll try and get it a little bit more even than that. So I think there are some new people signing on today. Welcome. Um, belly drawing's been going on now for about, I think it's about four years we've got to now. Um, it's been online ever since the first lockdown. So some people I've never met in person, but others have been regulars to the actual drawing classes. But wherever you're from, whatever your ability with drawing, welcome. Okay, awesome. I am moving on to my second colour. So you're taking a little bit of time so this doesn't look too um, patchy. I want it to feel like a nice block of colour. Okay, so I'll do a pinky one. And these can be any colours you want. You just want to be careful not to do them too dark because then it's hard for your line drawings to show up on top of them. These are almost going to work as like test colour palettes for our later drawings. So that's one of the reasons we're doing that as our warm up today is to get a little bit confident with colour mixing. This stand is <laughs> wiggling quite a bit. Sorry about that. So the beauty of using something like watercolours for these bits is you're going to get, it's going to be much easier to spread colour across a wider space quicker and create an even base. Um, but obviously your challenge will be for it to dry in time for you to add your image on top. So. If you are using watercolours, I would recommend try not to make it too wet um, because otherwise it'll take ages to dry today. Okay, so I've got my two colours here. Obviously you can see it's a bit patchy, but that's okay. It's just about having these blocks of colour in my background. Um, I think I'll do this purple next. So 
so I think some of you joined on for portraiture number one, which was when we were using tone, just focusing on um, light and dark with self-portraiture. Um, don't worry if you missed that first session. This is not going to depend upon that session. Um, but if at the end of this class you want to stretch yourself a little bit more and practice self-portraiture, you can go to the IGTV and use that class. Um, it's still up there, it's still accessible. Okay, I am almost onto my fourth box. If you're using watercolour pencils, uh, watercolour paints, you are going to be much quicker probably than me. But hopefully those of you that are using pencils are a similar pace. Okay, I'm onto my fourth and final box. So these boxes we're gonna use for um, experimenting a little bit, like I said, with colour today. So every exercise, I've got four exercises for us. And every exercise will increase in the amount of time that it's going to take us. So you might want to choose your least favourite colour as your um, for the first exercise. Okay, just 30 seconds more, then we'll kick off so we don't spend all day colouring these boxes. La, 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 la. Okay, brilliant. So this is where I've got to. I've got my four colours. You can see it's roughly laid on. I haven't done it perfectly. You can see, um, you can see kind of tide marks of where I've shaded it in. So it's not perfect at all. So our first exercise is we're going to do, pick a different colour to the background. So I'm going to pick purple on my green background. I might even pick a slightly richer purple. Yeah, I'm going to pick that purple. And we're going to do a blind contour drawing on top of our first one. So many of you have done this with me before, but essentially you're going to keep your eyes on your mirror. Once your pencil is down, you're not going to lift off your pencil from the page. You're going to have two minutes for that. So it's a, a good amount of time for our first warm up drawing. So I'll set the timer for two minutes. I'm going to start at the top of my block of colour here and at the top of my head. So once my pencil's down, I'm not going to look back at my drawing and I'm not going to lift my pencil off. So two minutes off you go. Now, because we're working in coloured pencils, it might be um, it might be slightly different to working in normal graphite pencils in terms of how hard you need to press. We'll figure that out quite quickly. So don't worry if this first one, you're not quite sure how heavy a mark you're making whilst you do it. Remember, really challenge yourself not to look at your drawing whilst you're doing it. So you've had one minute and you've got one minute left. I think I'm just gonna have to leave my camera at a slight angle because it keeps on moving. Sorry if that's a little bit disconcerting. Okay, you've got 40 seconds left. My eyes are darting around because I'm trying to check the timer, but try not to let your eyes move off the reflection in the mirror. Last 20 seconds. Last 10 seconds. And stop. Okay, fantastic. So that is, hey Julia, hope you're really well. That was the first warm up drawing. So that was my blind contour drawing, purple on green. The next one, doesn't matter which box you use, we're going to use our left hand, 
or, or your wrong hand. So whichever one is not your dominant hand, swap hands. This is gonna be a three minute drawing. And the idea with this one is that you can look at your drawing whilst you do it, but you're totally dependent on your non-dominant hand. So I'm gonna use a green on top of my pinky red here, putting it into my non-dominant hand and you've got three minutes for this one. So slightly longer, off you go. Now it'll be interesting to know if you find this harder or easier than the first exercise because the first exercise we weren't allowed to look but we were using our dominant hand whereas this one we're using our non-dominant hand but we are allowed to look and you can lift your pencil off the page it doesn't have to be a continuous line. So good to see some familiar names popping up. I hope you guys are all well and that you are, <clears throat> well, you have a nice weekend ahead of you. You've had one minute, so you've got two minutes left. Remember that keeping your head as still as possible will help this, um, this process because if you keep wiggling your head, you're gonna find it very difficult to do a self-portrait. You've got a minute and a half left. Try and fit every feature onto your face. Try not to leave anything unfinished in this one. You've got 50 seconds left. to stop my camera from doing that. You're on your last 10 seconds. And stop, fantastic. So that is where I got to with that one. So this one was my blind contour without looking. And this one was with my left hand, okay? And I was allowed to look. Okay, these are all getting longer, remember. So the next one is double that time, it's six minutes. Back with your dominant hand, you're allowed to look, but it's just a line drawing, okay? And we're still just limiting ourselves to one color. So I'm gonna go for like ready, ready purple. I'm gonna do it on my yellow section here. And you're gonna have six minutes for this one. Six minutes, off you go. If you're new to these classes, you'll find that I jump through the activities fairly quickly, especially with the warm ups. Because the idea with these classes is not that you create these amazing masterpieces, though some of you may do. Um, the idea is that you feel equipped with some kind of drawing exercises that can warm you up and loosen you into drawing. So that if you wanted to draw on your own, it'd be a little less overwhelming of where to begin. So feel free when you're drawing by yourself to try any of these exercises again and to look back at these drawings to get inspiration for color palettes or composition. Now remember, this is a lot longer this one, so take your time, don't rush it. You want this to be as accurate as possible, capturing a likeness. And 
you're probably not looking at me, which is great, but if you are, you'll notice that I keep looking up at the mirror and down at my page. I'm constantly cross-referencing where everything is. I'm not just guessing. Even though it's my face and I'm familiar with my face, I'm still looking a lot to check where everything is. Got four minutes left. Three minutes left. And this is just a linear drawing, so if possible, don't add, don't add shading in. You can add lots of lines to indicate um, outlines or hair, but we're not adding shading or tone at this point. Two minutes left. You might want to play around with how hard you're pressing your pencil because obviously the harder you press it the darker line you will get so that can help to indicate where the shadows are on your face. But the main focus of this is accuracy, getting it as accurate as possible. Two minutes left. One minute and a half. Now, I always manage to make myself look like a slightly haggard old woman, so don't worry if that's happening for you, if you've managed to age yourself like 20 years. I think often tonal drawing specifically, um, sorry, I mean line drawings can do that. Also, when you're drawing yourself portrait, you're obviously not smiling in the mirror, um, well, you might be, but that would be holding a position for a long time. I'm just looking at myself with a relaxed facial expression, which can tend to make you look a bit different to normal life. So don't worry if you're terrified by your outcome. <laughs> Henry. Yeah, I always end these, these uh, portraiture, portraiture sessions being like, hmm, not the most encouraging, <laughs> encouraging way to start my day. Okay, 30 seconds. Last 10 seconds. I love that you're all feeding back, Simone. Yeah, it's real life. Okay, and stop. So this is where I got to, the haggard old woman that is me down there. 
Um, so you should have three so far and you're just left with this final box, okay? So this final box, what we're doing is this is meant to be like a really playful colour experiment. So you're going to be using tone. What I mean by that is you're allowed to like colour in blocks of colour and um, thinking about shadows, think about highlights. I want you to try and use a mixture of colours. Don't just use two like we've been doing here. You're going to be using lots of colours. After this, I'm going to show you some artists that can inspire us for our longer study but I wanted you to be playful with colours before that so that you um, just see almost what kind of mark making you would choose naturally before we look at our artist inspirations. So I'm going to give us um, eight minutes for that one and I'm going to use as many colours as I can to be playful. Off you go. You also might want to use your rubber to actually pull back some of the blank paper behind your um, colour background if you did it in coloured pencil. Up to you what you do. Remember, this one is playful. This is not about um, it being your best drawing. It's about you being playful with how you apply colour, what kind of combinations of colour you're using. So I'll show you what I've got so far. I'm just like, these are different greens that I'm using to pull the face forward by giving a bit of background. I've used my rubber to bring out some of the highlights. Oh, that's fine, yeah. Stacey, for this last one, you've got um, just under six minutes. The idea is you're being really playful with colour um, in this one. You can use shading, you can use different tone. Sorry, it's not really focusing there. The idea is you're just experimenting with how colours work together before we look at our artist inspirations and we're too influenced by their work. So that's the idea. And you've got five and a half minutes left. So you've just, you've got a good long time to kind of give it a go, I would say. four and a half minutes left. Four minutes left. Three and a 
three and a half minutes left so the time is creeping by now so if you haven't got all um your features on your face try to really focus on getting those down um before you get really particular about the colors that you're using you want it to be as completed a portrait as possible before we move on Two and a half minutes left. A minute and a half left. And you're into your last minute now. Thirty seconds left. So hopefully you've kept it shifting colours. So this is a really good colour experiment for our next drawing. Twenty seconds. Five seconds. and stop. Okay, well done everyone. I'll show you what I got. So I was really trying to focus on playing with these colours. I wanted to see what different colours would be like in my background, what would make the head jump forward. I really like some of these bold purples and blues here. I'm less happy with the yellow on the face. I like the yellow but it doesn't seem to, um, doesn't help to bring a 3D sense of structure. It actually seems to flatten the face a bit. Okay, let me show you the artist inspirations for today because you're going to pick one of them to work in the style of. Um, so first of all, this is an artist I found um, on the National Portrait Gallery website. The artist is called Peter James Field. Um, I put it on the story, uh, I think yesterday, so you might have seen it already. But one of the things I love about this image is that there's a lot of focus on difference in tone on the on the head and on the boots, but then the suit almost looks like this quite um, almost like a collage pattern that he's cut out with paper and just stuck on. He's also played around quite a bit with perspective so that the head is actually a lot bigger than you would expect for a figure that size. 
And then the background's just got this really simple, even tone of pale, pale blue and the white on the left. So it's very blocky. Okay, this is another artist that I found on the National Portrait Gallery website. I can't remember um, Instagram. I can't remember the name of this artist. But if you look here, the use of colour is much more um, intricately woven. Like that background, it's not just a block colour background. There's lots of cross hatching of different colours and even on the face as well. Okay, so he's, he's, he or she has developed um, a sense of tone and structure to the face by overlaying lots and lots of colours on top of each other. Then the next two images we have are by an artist called Sarah Lightman. This is an acrylic um, painting that she has done. And so obviously this works very differently to using coloured pencils. But what we can see here is that, again, she's created many, many flesh tones on the face. But then the hair is done um, and it, she's created all these different yellows, but they're almost, it's more illustrative in the way that she's painted this. So each strand of hair is a different yellow. So if you've got fun, crazy hair like her, that might be a fun way you might think about depicting your own hair. You could do it obviously for straight hair like mine, but sometimes with curly hair, um, it can be a bit more obvious to pick out individual curls. And then this, so that's a self-portrait of Sarah Lightman's, and this is um, one she did of a model, and this is done in pastels. So that was the picture I used to think about what colours I wanted to use today. And here you can see it's quite a muddy colour palette in comparison with that first image we looked at. So there's some browny greys kind of coming through at different points. And again here we've got a mixture, there's some overlay of colours. It's not blocky in the way that first one was, but she still has got particular panels of colour. Okay, so... Um, Obviously, we can't have them all up at the same time. So I will try to swap between a few of them during this. We're going to have 20 minutes where we create our own self-portrait in the style of one of those artists. I'm going to try and do it in the style of the first one, actually, because I did my first set of ones in the style of Sarah Lightman. So I'm going to be thinking slightly more about bolder, blocky colours and patterns. And I'm going to try to include a lot more of the torso instead of just the head. But it's totally your choice. So the 20 minutes begins now. You might, before you start drawing, just want to reflect on the colours that you used in those warm-up drawings and think which ones were the most successful, which were the least successful and then just evaluate and adapt your colour palette slightly. So we've done four drawings of our face now, so we should be a little bit more familiar with the structure and proportions of our face. That's one of the reasons I like to do lots of warm-ups, because it just gets us really, really familiar with the subject that we're drawing. Also, hopefully, you're feeling a little less um, precious about the image you you're doing and you, you might feel more um, playful. Are you using colour background? For me, I'm just starting straight away just doing the portrait and then I'm going to think about adding in the background. If you want to start off with that technique we did at the beginning, you're welcome to do that. It depends with what you think would work best with the um, artist that you're using. So this Sarah Lightman one, I think she's used a coloured background that she's then built up upon. But this one looks like quite easily he might or yeah, he might have just added in that blocky background afterwards. I'll leave it on that one for a while. So you've got, you've got a mixture.
So I'll swap over to one of those other ones so you can see all of them as inspiration. You've had four minutes of your 20 minutes. So it does go by pretty quickly. So if you've got stuck on one facial feature, maybe move on, come back to it in a bit so that you can do as much as possible in the time you have. As you might be able to hear, I've jumped to doing some of the blocky colours in the background because I think that's going to help me with my colours in the foreground on the actual portrait. There's no right way or wrong order for doing this. You can start with the background or you can add the background in afterwards. Or you can do it halfway through. minutes left. Oh, with Sarah Lightman's one, she um, she has quite distinctive outlines on those hair shapes. They're almost outlined in black. So don't feel like it all needs to be um, subtly blended. You can add some quite bold um, marks in there too.
You have 12 minutes left. back to this one. Okay, you've got 10 minutes left. I can't believe how quickly that's flying by, but it's, it's going. Hi Sky. So Sky, we're just working on our final, um, our final piece of today. We've done a few warm-up drawings, and we're now, um, we're now doing our final piece, and we're experimenting with color palette today. So we're, we're doing a mixture of colors. Um, some people have chosen to use this Sarah Lightman image as their inspiration. So because we've we've only got ten minutes left, we might prefer to catch up with this on IGTV. But. Um, if not, just jump in and see where you get to in 10 minutes. Okay, nine minutes left. Eight minutes left. Okay, for these last seven minutes, I want you again to just remember the theme of today's session. And if you've really stuck to your own normal drawing style, try to break out of that a little bit and really use these artist um, inspirations to propel you onwards. Don't just get stuck in the style that you're already familiar with. You should try and stretch yourself a little bit. We've used such a variety of artists today that I'm expecting everyone's to look quite different. So it'll be really fun seeing what you, what you ended up with when you share a photo of your work, if you're happy doing that.
six minutes left. recommend trying not to leave any white spaces because none of the artists that we looked at had white spaces on theirs. Just under five minutes left. Let's up again to this one. Just under four minutes left. Three minutes left. Okay, try and think, what do you need just so that this now feels finished? If you've got more time to spend it later today, that's amazing. But if you don't, try to really challenge yourself with this last two and a half minutes to get to a stage of completion. Last two minutes. Last minute.
Last 30 seconds. Okay, and pause where you've got to. Now, I'm gonna give you an extra bonus two minutes, but only, or maybe just a minute actually, because of the time, but only when you've taken a moment to reflect on what you've got, okay? So mine, I tried to take inspiration from a few of the artists. The first one, Peter Jamesfield, with these bright oranges and yellows, and then with Sarah Lightman in building up colors on top of each other, so it looks a bit muddy in areas, okay? But still, if I look at it, doesn't feel 3D. So I'm just going to take one minute to try to make it feel a little bit more 3D and complete. So often we can just kind of plow on without getting that sense of completion because we haven't taken a moment to just reflect and evaluate. got 40 seconds this is your bonus minute to just think you don't need to use the whole minute you might just be adding a few tiny details that's wherever you think it needs to take it into that place of completion 30 seconds seconds ten seconds okay finish off where you got to okay this is where I got to definitely not perfect but I'm happy with some of the ways I've explored color here okay we're really trying to be playful and bold with how we explored color now, if you um, are willing, I'd love to hear something that went well with your exploration of colour um, or something that you think you could have done differently. Just a moment to kind of self-reflect if you write it in the comments so we can see what we all learn. And um, so for me, I actually found the challenge working so big. It was such a big area to try and fill with coloured pencil. So I think actually it would have worked better if I'd done it on a smaller scale. Um, would have meant I spent less time just trying to fill blocks of colour. So that's my evaluation of my work. I'd love to see what you guys would say. I would love to see photographs of both your preliminary kind of warm-up drawings and your final drawing. If you're happy sharing them, please take a photo and then just send it to me on Instagram Messenger or if you've got my number, just text it to me. And if you've enjoyed today's class and happy donating, um, I'll put my information for giving on my story. It's also on my highlights. Annie, you went too big too. Yeah, I think when you're using coloured pencils and it's got such a small tip, it's very hard in the time we had to fill such a large space. If you're using paints and bigger paint brushes, that can be absolutely manageable. To, you can just move more colour around quicker. Wish I'd use more solid areas of colour as opposed to softer areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I realised that as I went along, I'd done some bold outlines of things like the hair or the chin, but actually it needed some more blocky bits in part. Anyone else's thoughts before we end today? What do you think worked well or you could have done differently? You love playing with layering colour. Good, so glad. It's something I don't do much. I'm often used to kind of building up areas of tone when we use graphite pencil, but suddenly with colour, it's, it's almost like 
I personally am very hesitant to lay a color because I don't feel as confident with how they'll interact. But it's amazing when we get to practice that. Thanks everyone for joining on today. It was so good to see lots of you signed on. And um, please send me a photo of your work. And if you do any other work um, inspired by today's class, I'd love to see that too. If you don't want it posted anonymously, just let me know. I can give you feedback and not post it. But if you're happy posting it, it means everyone gets to see each other's work. Simone used watercolor, good job. You feel like yours needs more solid areas of color too. Too bitty so far. Awesome, I look forward to seeing your work. Thanks everybody. Love pairing colors and using colors to draw out features. Awesome, Emmy. Can't wait to see that. Thanks everyone. You have got to be bold and brave. <laughs> have a wonderful Saturday, everyone. Bye.